Today I decided to bring you along to make fish patties or salmon croquettes or salmon patties. It just depends on I guess where you're from. This is the salmon that we're talking about that we use. Um, double Q is usually the best one that I have found. Um, we can't get many things in Alabama that other people can get. I, I don't know why. Budget wise that's the best type of for as cheap as you get that's the best that you know you can get and, it, and it's really good some people use mackerel instead and you can also get it canned and it's usually uh it's usually right there with the um salmon the canned salmon canned meats you know tuna all that um but to me i don't like the taste it's terrible uh, my mom growing up that's what she used was the mackerel because we were very poor uh but I can I can splurge a little bit and get it just a little bit better. That's what I'm gonna do. All right, so First thing you need to do is open up your cans of salmon and go ahead and drain them and then I normally if you can see this Take out the backbone um, It does have little pieces of bone in it I just typically leave those in there, but the really hard round ones I go ahead and pull out and I try to also pull out some of the skin because I don't like that um, It doesn't really bother the taste. I just prefer not to have it in there and I don't get it out off of every piece but I get it off most of it um, and usually what we do is one can for every one can of salmon we use one egg and this is two cans of salmon so I'm going to be using two eggs so I've already taken off the pieces that I don't want on there and you don't have to use your hands with this but I will to make the patties um, and if you have gloves you can wear those you know if you don't you don't it's okay um, a lot of people don't have the money for stuff like that and they have to use their hands and just keep washing their hands so that's just what I'm gonna do today because it's just easier than having to stop um, I try to get most of the pieces broke up into just like finely mashed but sometimes I like to leave some of them kind of chunky so I kind of just do that but you can mash it completely if you want to and you can do that by hand or you can do it with a fork or you know whatever method you'd like uh you can also put chopped onion in this and that's what i you know knew about growing up that's what my mom did and that's what i did when I first got married but my husband doesn't like the texture so i put onion powder in it to still get the flavor without the texture and you're gonna need two eggs one for each can like i said that you're using so if it's four cans, it'll be four eggs, and so on. Now let me add the cornmeal. And you won't really need much after making this for a while you kind of can eyeball it and see you just need enough to hold it together that's still just a tad bit too wet And it's starting to hold together and you can salt it at this time if you want to or you can wait until you get it out of the skillet you can also do it then you will need a hot skillet we'll do this on the stove and it will get messy uh, because you're frying so you may need you may need a lid over your skillet and you're going to need some cooking oil all right let's move over to the stove so we're going to try to do this with the dishwasher going hopefully it won't mess up my sound this is a ball about that big and just mash it as flat as possible. And I kind of just squeeze the edges. And that's it. And that's about the size we make them. Um, if you make them thicker than that, you risk them not really getting done all the way through. Some people are okay with it, some people aren't.
Okay, so what you do is you just keep cooking it until the underside's brown. And then you flip it and you run the other side and then you're done. And then you just make more and you have to make them in batches so they cook evenly. Okay, y'all, that's it for today. Um, I got all of them done. I think it's around two dozen, maybe a little bit less, maybe around 20 patties that two cans will make. So that kind of gives you kind of an idea. Uh, if you're not sure, always add a can. Um, but that's it for today. So tonight is gonna be my easy peasy uh, beef stir fry. Um, I always use these vegetables. Um, I'm not sure if you can find them in smaller packages, but um, you know, this is about a three pound package and we end up using it for our lunch the next day. So it's supper plus lunch. Um, and it comes with some sauce pouches. I actually put those in with the vegetables too, and then I add some sauce, but I'll show you all that. Um, the first thing that you need to do is get you some stew meat. And I buy the stew meat from Walmart usually. Um, it just cooks better, it tastes better, it's just better overall. It does cost a little bit more, but it's just better. I've tried Aldi's and I've tried Walmart, and Walmart's still better. Um, I will tell you that. In order to save money, because this much meat here was like $16, um, I do take the big chunks and cut them down smaller so it'll go a little bit further. So you could possibly not put the whole two pounds in there and just put a pound to save some money. I'm gonna go ahead and use all of it because my family will eat all of it. They love it. But um, to save money, to cut back, you can make probably two meals out of this. But we're gonna go ahead and um, I've cut down the pieces to where they're a little bit smaller, and more even, and then I put a little bit of olive oil in a skillet and I'm starting to cook them now. Um, this even was a little bit frozen still, but it'll still cook up just fine. So what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna let it sit and cook. I did do it, put olive oil in the pan, but you do not have to use olive oil. You can use any oil, it's fine. So we got the meat done and I'm draining it right now and my skillet's still hot. So we take these pouches out and we set them aside, okay? You should have two if you get this big bag. And I don't add the meat back right away. I try to cook this down a little bit. I don't add the sauce right away or anything. You can, if you're a little bit concerned, you can add a teeny bit of oil if you want and a little bit of water just a touch water just a little bit not much put a lid on it so do that until it cooks down just a little bit you don't want it completely cooked down just a lot of it is frozen because I took it right out of the freezer so you want it to cook down just a little bit when it and when it um cooks down to about half of the size it is right now then you're going to add everything to it okay y'all so it's time to add the sauce packets that came in the frozen vegetable thing 
So what I do is I normally take my glass measuring cup, or you could do a big coffee mug or something, heat up some water in the microwave and put your pouches in there. That way they can defrost a little bit and you can get them out of the package. I open those up and pour those in. And it comes with two and we're using the whole pack of vegetables so we can use um since i found a place to open this um both of these little packs and that just helps extend your extra sauce if you want to add extra sauce you most certainly can you don't have to just rely on just that and this is my go-to this is what I always use, but this time we're gonna probably have to add some of this because they didn't have any more of my brand that I normally use. And for us, the two packets are not enough. We have to put extra, an extra little something and Kung Pao we like the best cause it's spicy. And here's our drained meat. We're putting that back in. You can use any kind of meat. I just used the beef stew mix because this basically big chunks already cut up for me. Um, you can also do chicken or you can do ground beef or shrimp. So this is not done cooking. As you can tell, the broccoli is extremely raw still. So you just put a lid on it and let it continue to cook. Okay, y'all, this is a finished product. I got everything done and I have enough juice and sauce and everything to help make it to where it's not so dry. So it turned out perfect and I'm happy with the color and all that. Um, you can also add a little bit of salt and pepper if you think you need that, but it turned out great. Oh, and also you can also add some red pepper flakes if you want a little bit more spicy. You're going to do a dump and go type recipe it's supposed to be very comforting and creamy and yummy and it doesn't really take that much ingredients and they don't have to cost a lot as as well first thing you need to do is take some chicken breast go ahead and get it in a pan a lot like this one you're gonna need about four cups of chicken broth go ahead and add that I did mine with bouillon, so the little dark things you see is the bouillon. It didn't dissolve all the way, but that's okay because it will as it cooks. An extra cup of water, so that's five cups of liquid. You're going to need a whole stick of butter. And then we're going to go ahead and put our seasonings in. We're going to need about a teaspoon of salt. We're going to need about a teaspoon of pepper. And about a half teaspoon of onion powder and a half teaspoon of garlic powder. So what we're going to do is we're just going to stir that up. We need to get those chicken breasts done and then I will be right back to show you what to do next. So the chicken is ready. I took it out, chopped it up into small little pieces because we're going to add it back in. But before we do that, we need to add our two cans of cream of chicken soup, and we're gonna whisk that in. And All right, so you need to miss this. Go ahead and cut your heat back on because you need to bring this to a boil. Okay, 
continue to bring that to a boil. And then we can add the noodles and the chicken back in and then we're done. Okay, so it is definitely boiling. Take it off here for a second, give it a second. The egg noodles that I chose were these. They're really thin. I don't know if you can tell. Real thin, so they shouldn't take long to cook and you don't want them to cook all the way because you want some of the liquid absorbed because it's supposed to be thick and creamy, not soupy, if that makes sense. And the noodles, oh, I couldn't find the right size pack for the recipe, so you're gonna have to kind of adjust it. Um, 16 ounce package is what I found. It only calls for a 12 ounce package, so I'm gonna have to leave part of these in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour. And leave about that much in the bag. If you can tell, less than half, about a third. And you can go ahead and add your chicken back in now. Your cooked chicken. And then just give it a few minutes. And like I said, we're not cooking the noodles all the way. We're gonna cook them halfway and then let everything sit and thicken up because that's that's why we want it to be so just give it a few more minutes and it'll cook down I'm just gonna go ahead and try to turn these noodles over in here to get everything cooked and so I'll give it a few more minutes. Definitely don't want to leave it at this point because like I said, you don't want it to cook the noodles all the way through. You want it to sit. Normally what I do with all the pasta that I cook, I let it cook until it gets to a certain point and then I just stop it, turn it off, take it off the burner, let it sit and it'll absorb the rest of the way. It'll absorb the juices and everything and it'll cook the rest of the way. So it turns out perfect in the end. It's not um, mushy and yuck my family hates that and the egg noodles are so thin they're gonna cook quickly so it shouldn't take long it just depends on the thickness of the noodle that you chose so it shouldn't take long at all maybe just a little bit more pepper a little bit more salt so now we turn it off take it off the burner and let it sit and you can put a lid on this if you want to Okay, y'all, this is the end product. It did really good about soaking everything up without turning it into a big pile of soup um, or a soupy mess. So, uh, really easy. It took just a few chicken breasts, a little bit of seasoning, and some noodles, and some cream chicken soup, and you have a meal for the entire family. Very, very budget-minded. Um, if you like what you saw, please be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.